Hey guys, I feel like Apple has something to worry about now because Samsung just announced their latest flagship S24 series and it's packed with features of the future. But Samsung didn't do this alone. They partnered with some of the leading tech companies in the world to make it all possible. First off, Samsung partnered with Google. They have been partnering with Google for like a while now, but for S24, they partner with Google even more. And this is great. This is excellent for both Google and Samsung. Google gets a wider audience to showcase their power of AI and software technologies in general, which can make Pixel phones look more appealing to the consumer as well. And on Samsung's end, Samsung with their powerful hardware and now with Google's powerful software, they can truly give Apple a competition that is on the same level, if not better than the iPhone. Because recently we've heard that Apple has overtaken Samsung as the world's top smartphone seller last year with 234.6 million units sold of the iPhone compared to Samsung's 226.6 million units sold. So with this partnership with Google, I feel like Samsung has a bit more of an edge for this new year and I'm sure they will come on top. I really like how smartphones are getting more years of security and OS updates. This started with Google Pixel 8 lineup where they announced seven years of security and OS updates. And now we hear that Samsung is going to do the same thing with their S24 lineup. And I'm totally here for it. I feel like smartphones have got so good nowadays that they tend to last longer. So why not support security and OS updates for longer? So Samsung powered with Google and they're using the Gemini and Nano technology which is a powerful AI model made by Google for on-device tasks. So Gemini Nano will be powering a lot of the S24 lineup AI capabilities. Google Messages will have new features that will protect your data in addition to various other AI features available on your phones which we'll talk about. Samsung introduced Galaxy AI and my first impressions or just like hearing about it because they have made teasers about it going into the announcement. And from that, I was a little skeptical about it. I'm like, this may be a gimmick. But after seeing their announcement and the features live actually being used by the presenters, it seems very promising. Like, first off, I love Circle to Search. It seems like the future of search. And it's not just exclusive to Samsung phones, like the way the Samsung announcement made it seem like it's a Google thing. So it will also be available on Google Pixel phones as well as the Samsung S24 lineup. But circle to search seems really cool. You can basically search anything on your screen, whatever you're looking at. So it may be a TikTok, it may be a YouTube Shorts, or an article that you're reading, or just a photo of friends just texted you. And anything of that sort, you just hold the home button for like a second and it will do like a quick scan of your screen and you can basically circle whatever to use Google's technology. That's very similar to Google Lens, but rather than having to open a specific application and upload a screenshot, or a photo and then it's telling you what it is you can just search it anywhere without having to transition into different apps second we have live translate and this is ai powered live translate like in the name and it's it's pretty cool they showed a demo where you can talk to someone who speaks a different language and it will live translate it for you it's basically having a personal translator on the go anytime you need it they also showcased note assistant which is basically this useful ai summarization and organization of your notes that is done instantly on the device. And we have seen various other AI generators or AI companions that do the same thing like ChatGPT, BART, Copilot, but these are all applications that you would have to like paste something into and then respond. Whereas the note assist is built into the note Samsung notes app and you can just like put all your thoughts. It doesn't have to be, you know, in, in any particular order and then ask it to summarize and it will summarize it, organize it in like a neat highlighted categories of the topics you are talking about. There's also generative edits and this is really cool. You can edit photos and videos for photos. You can change where a certain object is or a subject is standing. You can remove something, you can change where where you are, you can make the photo overall look better. There's also an AI video editing feature. So let's say you have like a normal video, you can make it into slow-mo. It will use AI to fill in the gaps of the slow-mo transitions to make it more smooth effect of it being a slow-mo video. And lastly, there's chat assist, which is also really cool. It's similar to live translate, but rather than with voice, it's translating via text on your messages app. You can talk to people in any different languages and it will translate live within your chat 
application right below it the messages you're saying it will translate in the preferred languages here are a few things that I really like. Quick Share, which is the Android's version of AirDrop. And it's it's a wireless instant sharing of photos and videos between nearby Android phones, tablets, and even Windows computers. And this is really cool because it expands to a lot more Android device. It's not just Samsung phones, but it can also be Samsung to a Pixel phone or a different Android phone. But it expands the horizon of AirDrop type of thing. So you can, you can share your photos and videos among more Android Android devices and it's not just phones it's the tablets it's the computers and I'm totally here for it I think that's really cool and they should have done this sooner but hey we have it now something else that Samsung talked about is their partnership with Instagram and snapchat to bring HDR and native camera system quality and features to both of these applications and that's the first you know they're beating Apple to it I would think Apple would have got this years ago but Apple has not announced anything like this yet but this is a cool feature I've always used Instagram and snapchat where you, know, you capture a photo and it's not it doesn't look as good as how your native camera may take it so now we have Instagram and snapchat that will come in with these features and you could capture more clear quality photos and videos with these third-party applications here we have all the specs for the three different models of the s24 and you know you, you can kind of take a look at it how you want and what you prefer and first off i want to talk about the design i really like the whole new flat display samsung has been trying to do the curved display for years and it seemed cool and futuristic at the time but as a user kind of got in the way at times and i didn't necessarily like it especially when you put it on a case it made it harder to reach or like touch anything that was on the edge because part of your case is covering it so they, they removed that and it's it's a flat screen it's more like the iPhones now and it's a solid build I went to Best Buy and they had the mock-ups uh, for display unfortunately they did not have it where I can actually like go into the phone and test the camera or just like overall mess with the OS or anything like that they just had a mock-up where they had a sticker over the screen and I couldn't necessarily get into the phone but I, I can feel it and see how it felt in the hand and see where the buttons are and overall the design and my first impressions they felt very solid they reminded me of the iPhone you know that they, they look very much like the iPhone and I'm totally here for it you know now you have good software with good hardware and it's a really good phone I am actually really considering switching to Android soon and this might be it let's talk about the processor the latest and greatest processor for smartphones available right now is the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and that's custom made for Samsung Galaxy phones and it's going to be available on the Galaxy S24 Ultra. It's also going to be available on the S24 and S24 Plus but however for the S24 and S24 Plus it's not going to be included in all markets. In some regions they're going to use Exynos 2400 chips including the US, China, Japan and Canada but in the case of the Galaxy the S24 Ultra that's going to have Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 across all markets. I don't know why they're doing this. I wish they would just put the Snapdragon on, on all of them rather than using Samsung Exynos, which I have heard not many great things about. Not as good as the Snapdragon. Fortunately for the Galaxy S24 Ultra, we will have the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and I'm excited to actually get my hands on it and see what the performance are really like. Overall, I hear the cooling system has been improved to keep the phone's temperature low and performance high. And and we're gonna get the latest software of Android. We're gonna get Android 14 with its new widgets, fonts, notification options, and security capabilities. And I love the fact that you get seven years of security and OS updates. So, you know, you can have this phone up to Android 21. So lastly, I wanna talk about the price. So the regular S24 is 800 bucks. The S24 Plus is $1,000 and the S24 Ultra is 1300. They are pricey smartphones, but I think with everything that's packed in phones now, they kind of deserve it. So let's break down to three phones so if you want to decide which one you want to get this may be helpful so the regular galaxy s24 is great fit for you if you're looking for a lighter phone a smaller display 6.2 inches and you don't necessarily care about the titanium build or the s pen and you're generally okay with less storage and ram it has up to 256 gigabytes of storage and only eight gigs of ram options and usually the battery should last you a whole day like you don't necessarily burn out the battery throughout the day because it only has 4,000 milliamp hour battery and it does not 
not have the greatest and the latest camera features but if you if you still love to take pictures and don't necessarily need the extra fancy camera features the s24 may be for you and also it's within your budget like it's the cheaper of the newer models second we have the s24 plus and that's great for you if you don't necessarily care about the s pen or the titanium frame and you're okay with less sophisticated camera capabilities than a professional photographer or an influencer who actually needs it in terms of the display it's not as big as the s24 ultra or small as the s24 it's somewhere in the middle and lastly you prefer a step up from the entry level model but don't need all the extras for that the ultra offers then the s24 plus is perfect for you and finally we have the s24 ultra and it's a great fit for you if you love the pen to paper feeling that only the ultra's exclusive s pen can deliver i personally have used the s pen on my galaxy note 8 i have used it throughout college and i've used it from time to time here and there to take notes and honestly it, it's a great feature it's very handy if you're like a student or you know you attend a lot of meetings it's very handy to just pull it out and take quick notes but it's not necessarily a need but if that's something that you like then definitely go with the ultra it, it also has the new titanium shell it looks and feels great in the hand i really like it and since it's the ultra it has the ultra big display 6.8 inches and if you're in the market for the most powerful and feature packed camera system available then the s24 ultra is a fit for you in addition it has up to 12 gigs of ram up to one terabyte of storage and a whopping 5000 milliamp hour battery one really nice key upgrade to the s24 ultra is their new gorilla glass armor with its anti-reflective coating that reduces glare up to 75 percent compared to the s23 ultra and i've seen photos across twitter that really show the difference and it seems like such a cool upgrade like you can use it in daylight out in the sun without much glare or or even indoors with maybe a lot of lights around you there are less glare compared to the other phones and i think that's a major upgrade and it looks really stunning i feel like they should have mentioned that a lot more in the announcement they kind of glanced over it but that's a really cool upgrade in my opinion and i hope more phones in the future have these anti-reflective coating that reduces glare overall having said all this though you do want to also consider the price it's definitely for someone who has a bigger budget and don't don't mind paying more for the premium features then it's definitely for you but i do have additional thoughts for the ultra s24 and that is i really wish they had a smaller form factor without the s pen but still has many of the camera features and storage options it would be nice to have 12 gigs of ram up to a terabyte storage with like the latest and greatest features for cameras available but a smaller form factor like 6.2 inches or 6 inches or something on a smaller factor i feel like the s24 24 is kind of too big for my hands and especially coming from the iphone 12 pro i feel like it would be a major difference and it will it will take some time to get used to a bigger screen personally i like a smaller display it's much easier to reach with one hand in terms of when it comes to typing or selecting applications or you know whatever i'm doing on the screen having said all this do you really think apple should be worried about this let me know your thoughts in the comments below i personally can't wait to get my hands on these devices for a full in-depth review so stay tuned don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell icon and as always have a superb day and thanks for watching